better than me. everyone welcome back to the you better than me podcast i am here with my girl fallon and guys don't be upset don't be upset but we are here at the season finale so today we are going to be yeah. <laughs> today we're going to be discussing some of our previous episodes from this season as well as speaking about some of the things that we're going to be doing and working on while we're on our little bit a little bit of a sabbatical so what's going on fallon Yes, I'm just really overwhelmed and amazed that it's been another whole ass season. Like, I know. We, just, we didn't literally shift the season on the people. We went from fall to winter, about to be spring. Like, folks that got married, folks that got new jobs, folks that leveled up. Like, we have really been living some life. And it's, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just crazy. It just, it really just feels like, Time flew by, but so many major things occurred. Man, it just makes you think about when people always say, when it's your season, it's your season. Because when you look at this season, like we started the things off like winning season. And this whole season has pretty much been a lot of wins, a lot of highs, and not too yeah. many lows. And I think that's that's a good thing. That's the thing about season. Like you could be in a bad season, you know, in one period, and then that thing just flip and turn around and everything is working out for your good. I feel like we've been really blessed. I mean, even with the the good comes bad, but it's been bad to the point where we've been able to like strategize or like work through it or like lean on our faith and just like really see that at the end of some bad, it's always going to be some shine or some, what what your girl say? That's why I love tomorrow or whatever the girl be saying. Girl, you know I love Glorilla. Glorilla. Like, <laughs> it's literally going to be some, that's why I love tomorrow type energy. And it's it's been a lot of that because we really have just... And I know we talk all the time, the stuff that comes on the podcast is just a uh, minimal of half the stuff that we talk about, especially like, you know, with our girlfriends and stuff like life be life. And but when you really just sit back and reflect on everything that has occurred these last shoot, it's been more than 10 weeks. It's been what she was like four yeah. months, five months, like a mm-hmm. whole quarter of a year, like so much has occurred. Yeah, you are so right. Um I'm excited. I want to thank the people for rocking with us because I think that in the media today, podcasts, they get kind of like a bad rep, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that on this particular platform, we always try to make sure that we are respectful. And then while being respectful, we always try to make sure that we are speaking and living in our truth because that's one thing about me. I want to be as organic as I can be, but I do understand that there are some conversations, there are some topics, and even though I feel like I'm an open book, that are not for the platform. They for your friends in your secret space when y'all yeah. on the phone with each other, key keying, and you on FaceTime, and not to be brought to a platform. So, with that being said, I just want to thank y'all for rocking with us. Yeah, and I feel like that podcasts kind of have gotten a bad rep. Like I see people talking shit on the Instagram post and everybody want to have a podcast and right. everybody wants somebody to listen to them. But I really feel like you and I have found a group. We've brought topics that are relevant. I don't feel like the topics that we have discussed on here have been things that have been worn into the ground on other shows. Um, like it's fresh. We bring a new perspective and I'm really appreciative also of everybody that gets down with us from the people who send text messages to just being like, girl, I heard about this. I'm so happy for you. Like the love has been real and it, it just feels good to like sit here and really be on season two finale, the recap, like we didn't did this child. We didn't did this. No, and, and a special shout out to my massage therapist. If y'all don't know this about me, your girl love to get rubbed down. But today I was venting to my massage therapist because she's like that. And as soon as I was venting, she was like, girl, you better than me. So <laughs> she listens to the podcast. So shout out to her. And I would say her name, but I don't want y'all to go fill up all my spots because she be booked and busy. You sure do be um, gatekeeping. I'm gatekeeping her. Like, I'm gatekeeping. I gave two of my friends a gift card to her and I told them, do not tell anybody else. After you enjoy your experience, don't tell anyone else. That's hilarious. (laughs) 
sitting back, like I literally just went through like all the episodes and I, I, I don't know which one was my favorite. I, I can't put a finger on it. Now I could tell you the one that got the most comments in the group chat popping which off. Which one? Don't tell me how I'm coming. How it's home, home motherfucking <laughs> coming. So yeah, the homecoming or not the homecoming. I think a lot of people especially like my friends they were like so that means because you get married you ain't going to homecoming no more so if you listen to the to the episode um and that was your takeaway you know that is not what i was saying i was oh, saying that it didn't seem I, like that y'all it's no like that. it didn't i was just saying that sometimes the seasons change and like the things that you're looking forward to may shift and that's just not the season that i'm in so i did get a little a little slack from my hbcu crew talking about oh i don't, I don't care about no marriage now hey, i'm gonna do it <laughs> homecoming baby come if, on. You, if, uh, if you ain't um paying these bills or uh, uh keeping these lights on or laying up in me let me love grab on your chest and lay on your chest at night time i'm good about homecoming but that's me and you could be better than me if you feel like homecoming is something you're going to have to keep going to regardless of your marital status or what you have going on in life. I'm going to let y'all have it. So I think that homecoming was definitely um, one of my favorite episodes. I feel like I told y'all a lot of my business on there without telling y'all my business. But (laughs) as soon as the episode released and we saw what they pulled from the episode for release, I was like, oh my gosh, like they're really saying this. And it was me that was really saying it. It was really you. I felt really weird, but I was like, that's my truth. And that was me being yeah. organic. So that was definitely one of my favorite. One of my, I don't want to say least favorite favorites, but one of the um, podcast um, topics that I have not listened to was the one on grief. Um, oh, yeah. I think it was a much needed uh, podcast topic. I'm happy that Fallon and I did it. But even with someone that has been dealing with grief, you know, for about 17 years, because I believe it was like 17 years to my mom's passing earlier this week it's still such a hard topic for me. Like it, it just is like, you just don't know what to say to someone. And you yeah. just, you just find your place. You find yourself in a place that you've never been before that you can't navigate. And even if you have been there and now you're helping someone that is there, it's just hard to navigate. So I haven't listened to that, but what I will say is uh, hopefully by the end of next week, I will listen to it. <laughs> a lot of people told me that they weren't ready to listen to it, but just in the course of, the beginning of season two and now i have let me see two friends who have lost their mothers one Mm. friend who's lost their father numerous friends and family who have just lost cousins or friends or co-workers and things like that so even though the episode was hard to do like we thugged it out and everything i feel like it's relevant so even if you didn't listen to it now i'm glad that it is existing out there in the world so that people can listen to it when they're ready um and grief is like ongoing. Like, it yes, is. we talked about it during the holidays, but shit, sometimes people grieving at the randomest moments and those conversations need to be had. So black people too, we always talk about gotta be strong, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, yeah. a part of the healing is that weak moment, that vulnerability. So when you feel like you're ready, I say, listen to it. Um, if it brings some emotion, then it's probably some emotion that needed to come out. Um, We can't run away from it. I feel like a lot of times that's what we do. And then it just manifests into other problems. But the season is over and it's still moments of grief. Like, it's just, (laughs) it's reality. So I wouldn't say, uh, I don't know if I had a a least favorite episode. I feel like you and I probably struggled at one point to just really go in about a topic. I'm trying to remember what it was, but I don't even think we... No, we actually did. It was the male friends. That was one that we oh, went yes. back and forth with. I feel like that was hitting too close to home. Like it was one of those where it was like, okay, uh, are we going to talk about this? Do we need to talk about this? How is this going to come off? Like, I feel like that's probably the hardest topic that we had, um, that we drug our feet on. Like we dragged and drugged and and limp no we drag grief more than that girl because yeah. grief was supposed to be last season you're right <laughs> right but okay so that would be the second drag i would say yeah because we did hard. go back and forth on that one we did yeah. but i'm glad that we were able to have that conversation without any you know extra bad baggage leaking over or nothing like gratefully all my reservations were resolved like right. everything that I was afraid would come to head 
was worked through. So I'm glad we were able to talk about that and give that perspective and not me giving that perspective from a place where I'm I'm in the midst of some shit and not wanting to talk about it. But that one was probably the hardest to make for me. I think so. Yeah, I think that was. Um, I, I'll talk about grief all the time. I feel like part of my healing process is to discuss it. So that one, eh, meh. It was hard, but it wasn't hard. I, I was looking out for you. I, I didn't want you to be crying and whatnot. You know, I thugged it out. I thugged my way through it. Yeah, I think that the mixing and the mingling was probably my second favorite, only because, like, it is just so real. Like, even right now, like, I really wanted to have a Galentine's Day um, party at my house and it had nothing to do with mixing you about me. that I know I, I wanted to but thinking about mixing and mingling like I have a lot of things like trips that I'm going on which are going to involve mixing and mingling to the point I've been uh-huh. stressed out to the point where you and I have had conversation on me just backing out of a trip and just letting the money go to where it's going to go because for me I feel like money flows to you so I'll get it back mm-hmm. spend that check get it right back and then secondly um I don't know I think that um, I'm probably gonna like shy away from group trips for a while and maybe do some solo trips and just mix and mingle with some new people that are there, but not a collective of people if from a different solo so. or a trip with my husband. Um, I'm not necessarily too amped about it. Um, and that could be a whole episode in and of itself. I have some trip horror stories, but I also have some moments where spirit just was like no nah, sit down rest right and in the moment we probably were like distraught like oh no we can't go we're not going or feeling played or something like that but ultimately i think those reservations are like protection I'm not saying mm-hmm. that nothing bad is gonna happen but that the stress prior to going like why are you stressing like i'm not trying to do anything right. that's adding extra stress if i see that it's going to be a problem i think you know we can go see uh, a show another time if you want to. You wait till them prices fall. I'm about it. Uh, uh, one-on-one trips are better for me. Like you the know big what? I think so know. too. But just yeah, like two, a one homegirl, two homegirls, I'm good. Yeah, I'm. I'm starting to feel that way. But I think that I don't know. I'm at a place where I definitely need. I'm overdue for a solo trip because remember, I was going to turn my birthday trip into a solo trip, and I went out, went with a friend, which I was happy to go with a friend, but. I think I'm overdue for a solo trip. So I think I just, I need that this year and I'm going to make it a priority when the time is right. Yeah, I'm with it. Since you've talked about next year, I guess we can take that as a segue to talk about what we have going on for the rest of this year and take a moment to pay these bills for the church's money. All righty. probably heard of our sister company, Pyro Media Network, where some of the best rising star creators are streaming next level content. But have you ever wondered how they are produced? Have you ever wanted that same top quality content creation, photography, video production, and more for your brand? Don't take another second to debate. Book your wedding photographer or videographer, create a promo for your business, or get your special occasion film in the most beautiful way possible. Visit www.tyromediaproductions.com or call 323-405-3820 to schedule a free consultation and let us take your project to the next level. So you said that you want to take a solo trip in the new year. Like that's on your your plans. I'm still call it the new year. You know, February, <laughs> January is like a test run for me. Like I feel like my new year don't really start until like February, March-ish. So I'm going to be happy new year in, in March when the seasons change. That's when the real astrological new year starts and when the time changes. So I'll be having another new year's then, right. new year. Um. So you said you want to take a solo trip. What else are you looking forward to in this year? What are you manifesting? Um, if, the, if the people are current on their episodes and they heard one big list of things that you're manifesting in an individual, 
Um, yes, are you looking mommy, forward mommy, to mommy. that person, your man, your man, your man materializing in the new year or what, how are you approaching it? Um, I'm approaching my man, my man, my man by not approaching it. So <laughs> <laughs> where I am, like I, I have it in my phone. My list is in my phone. Maybe I'll transfer that, that phone list to a paper list because I'm very one of those people where like, I'm a write it down, make it happen type of person. I do still, I do still believe in pen to paper. So maybe I will put that over on a piece of paper, but um, I'm just going with the flow. Like I said, I'm not going out with a mug on my face. Um, yeah. I am going out like, okay, what is the ratio of men to women? Because if this is going to be mm-hmm. like some whole, some girl stuff, count me, I'll get somebody else. I can stay at the house. Like I'm trying to see yeah. maybe some single and available men. So that's one thing. Um, Speaking about the new year, like I didn't write down all my things either because like you said, January is still kind of heavy. It's still kind of like over December for me. And I know it was even rougher for you in 2022. So I feel like just like what you said, like the new year is like February, March time. But Mm -hmm. there are some things on my list that I want to do for this year. Like I really want to take piano lessons. I really Mm want to... Take I, don't know why I thought you knew how to play the piano already. Why did I think See, that? That's crazy. Sing? My little brother was afforded piano lessons, but Kristen wasn't. So, but you can yeah. sing though. So I, I know. That's why singing. I need to. That's why I need to learn how to play the keys. So I want to. Um, I want to do that. Um, what else is on my list? I am going to be in, in an upcoming show. So if you are in the DC area, I will be in a show. Um, I believe it's like in May. So um, you can follow my personal Instagram to get more information or I may even post it on you better than me but that's something that I'm doing and I have a lot of things in my mind but again it's not written down on paper for me to tell you everything I'm manifesting this year but those are some things that I really want to do you can tell me yours and I'll probably be like girl I want to do that too (laughs) so the first thing I'll say is you may not have finished writing down or you may not have active plans but The minute the people started listening to you read your list out loud, that alchemy in it and of the collective touching and agreeing on this nigga, um, I feel like it's going to make those manifestations happen a lot quicker. So you be prepared. You make sure you uh, you make sure you looking cute when you go out to these non female events. Um, That's my first point. Um, You ain't got to approach him. We going to see you. Just make sure you got. You're glossy, you're smiling, you, you're open to receive because the people are going to collectively alchemize their nigga for you since okay. we have spoke it out loud I um, it. as a group. All, all across the world, people are, are listening and, 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 and touching and agreeing on this, this man. Um, second, I feel like last year, so much was going on, like paying for a wedding, paying mm-hmm. for all these events doing all this stuff like for us this is kind of like a transitionary a transition year um pay things off figure things out and get accustomed to being mrs vaughn um right. so much was going on like right after our wedding that we had to reschedule our honeymoon so we still want to try to do that um still want to at least get that taken care of before you know we calling around nobody children and whatnot and can't just move as freely as we want to so we do want to do a little bit of travel um in the midst of paying things off and for me this year 2023 is going to be the five-year anniversary of my poetry book coming out shout out to an old you know it's still available on amazon feel free to catch up with it if you haven't read it yet but I feel like I want to do something where I'm either writing a part two to that book or revamping it. Um, Mm -hmm. I recently was on like a podcast and we were talking about poetry. um, Just, oh, you're a poet, blah, blah, blah. Like here, read some pieces. And I read maybe like two pieces from that book. And I was like, damn, this doesn't even seem like the same person wrote this book. Um, So I was like, yeah, girl, I don't, I, this is weird. Like it didn't even, it felt so foreign. Wait, was uh, it but, coming from a, pl- a place of growth or what? Um, It was coming from like a place of, damn, you came a long motherfucking way. Um, it was coming from a place of now having self-worth, now mm-hmm. thinking of myself as the prize, um, thinking of myself as deserving of all the love that I do have now. Um, I feel like 
back then, it, it was coming from a very hurt place. Um, but ultimately, that vulnerability transformed my life for the better. Like, it really created this whole just person that I am now. Like, I love myself. I love everything I got going on. I love, like, just a bitch is popping. And 2018 me, yeah, 2018 me was coming from a place of wondering why some shit didn't work out um in 2023 me knows that it didn't work out because it wasn't supposed to and um, something better was yes, gonna work baby, a million times better um so i read it and i feel like a little disconnected i'm like damn this isn't my story anymore but um ashley shout out to her she is the director of the free black women's library the texas houston texas branch she was like well the beauty in that is, is there are other women who are where you were so right. you still have you know pieces of yourself in that in that book like but that old now is somebody else's old like you still can share pieces you still can read from it you still can talk from it you still can like embody everything that is encompassed in that book um because you made it to the other side and that in and of itself is kind of like um showing a victory so i kind of want to work on updating the book um maybe do like some type of five-year release re-release or something like that and your girl is still trying to be a new york times best-selling author of a a fiction book so we we hopefully are speaking life into that um life work marriage um family just a bunch of stuff kind of gets in the way when you don't have time to just sit around and write all day because, you know, yeah. you're still in full-time practicing law, full-time wife and full-time daughter and sister friend and podcast host and all these other things. <laughs> I really want to carve out time to work on my creative endeavors when it comes to my writing practices. So that's probably um, the biggest ask of myself in the universe for this rest of this year is to be able to have a complete body of work to one, supplement this poetry book and then to start shopping around with literary agents and try to get myself some type of deal. So okay. we're speaking we agents. touching and agreeing. We are touching and agreeing. And you know, also living on my husband, growing. Um, we just tossing cop we just listen, leaving it up to God right now on what's going on with the body talk. Maybe we'll come back with a part two of body talk talking about okay, your girl is in this 40 and pregnant club. I don't know. Again, we leaving it up to God. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to um, get into for the rest of this year. Let me put out a disclaimer for that. You don't know, and that means don't ask. <laughs> because I think that's very important for people to start worrying about people's what? Personal business. Yeah, stay out, out of my womb. Line, sister. Personal yeah, business. stay out of my womb. Stay right. out of my cat. Stay out of my bedroom. Um, just know that me and Mr. Vaughn, we good over here. Um, and whenever I make an announcement, it's going to be an announcement. Uh, the only right. person who was allowed to ask about my kitty is Dr. Jones, who was on an earlier <laughs> episode. <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Jones, our board certified gynecologist who was with us for our body talk part one. That's the only person outside of my husband who can inquire on my kitty activities. So I wish we, because, you know, I had sent you that thing where you were supposed to write once a day. Did you do that? Because I wish we both would have done it if you didn't do I it. don't remember. No, you I didn't. Do, because you said it was dope. So I sent it to you. It was like $50 and you had to write whatever piece of work you want to write, poetry, whatever, once oh, a day. Oh, I thought it's like $50 finish, and scroll right on. <laughs> yeah, I did too. <laughs> once you finish, then uh, they would publish a book for you. But I just thought it was cool because you had to have that mindset of, yeah, I'm not going to do that for dollars every day so yeah i feel like we should challenge ourselves to do something like that let's let's maybe we could do a you better than me challenge for like a goal that people have especially while we wait for the new season to start yeah we Uh, should but um you know my schedule i sent it to you yeah your schedule but that doesn't mean that i don't want to challenge myself because i do schedules on be scheduling um but hey, if we we're all about a, a Renaissance woman. We're all about people knowing how to oh, handle multiple man. things. Now, hope I mean that that man we done manifested. He might meet you while you walking in and out of the show or something. We don't know. He might hear your voice and just be like, mm. "That's my wife." <laughs> it could happen. Uh, we, we it could, but our shows attract a lot of you know different. Oh, 
people. Well, they might have a, a straight a co-worker. cousin or a brother that yeah, might be interested. A straight coworker who can introduce right. you. Well, you never know, but it's coming. I'll take that. I ain't blocking. I'm not blocking any blessing that's supposed to be for me, Lord. So whatever I'm supposed to have, I pray that I'm open to receive it and that like outside influence of things that may have once been good for me that yes. are no longer good for me are not in the way. Amen. I second that mm-hmm. prayer. That was good. Look at you. You be coming up with some good words and words when you want to. <laughs> Listen, I said something in my one-on-one to my manager earlier this week about, yeah, because people want you to, I was like, I may not be, the, this may not be the type of icing that someone wants on their cake. They may want a different icing. He was like, wow, I never heard of that. I was like, I just thought about oh, it and made it up. I don't even know why I said it. He was like, she got like bars. It. She got bars. bars. But you know what? I do think that we need to do something because I don't know if you know, but like I, okay, so let me just say this. Because someone once said, you are what you do. So if mm-hmm. you bake, even if you're not selling your baked goods, you are a what? Baker. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you sing, even though you're not singing and selling out, you know, um, theaters or whatever, you're still a singer. So yeah. in the past, it was more, um, I wrote a lot of a lot of songs. So I'm still going to say I'm a songwriter. So I definitely yeah, want to get are. to doing that. I definitely want to do that. So we, we don't see. I love that. Um, I hadn't heard that saying before, but I do love it. Um, it makes me think about, I don't know if you watch Lovecraft Country, but the episode where they were like, name yourself. Who are you? Where do you want to be? Um, and like she basically said who she was. So I think there's so much power in just naming yourself. And I really hope that not only us, but like the people our little tribe takes a moment to like really name themselves and like talk about what they want to be, who they want to be, where they want to be going in this new year while they waiting for us to come back for season three. See, that was a word. And I never watched Lovecraft Country, but that was a word. And that's something that I probably need to look into because it goes back to your affirmations too. I am, you know? Yes. So, Because I can definitely say I am a well-loved wife. I am a innovative and caring creative who is writing words that are going to change and empower many people we are award-winning podcast hosts or we soon will be so i'm speaking that into life also because i feel like we have a message that is worth all the accolades and all the attention it's, it's bringing because we are shedding light on a softer side of Sears, a different, a different um, mm-hmm. perspective. We ain't just talking about relationships. We're really just talking about the art of Black womanhood. And, and so many things don't focus on that or even look at it as an art. So I'm glad that we have this platform to be able to do so. Um, I am also a best-selling author in this season. Um, I may not have a book completed right now, but when you do, it's gonna do what it do. And yeah, I've been a mother for a long time. I've been loved and a sister and a daughter, all these things, but I wanna be a great one of all those things in this new season and this upcoming next few months. And I think it's like a transitionary period for us too. So we'll come back fresh and energized and filled yes. with like all the good news and all the tidings and good cheer for the people when we come back for season three. I would definitely ditto that. Definitely would. But you're going to name yourself. You already said a sync up song. I, I knew you was going to say that. I was like, what? Well, you should, and you, should do it. you do it too. <laughs> you should have been ready because. We're I, not- and I was over here thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to be my turn. Yes. Yeah, okay. we're going to be speaking power and putting it out there into the universe. It's going to be a collective. It's the Fallon and Kristen moment. So name yourself too, please. And so, thank you. I am a woman that is not afraid to use my God-given talents in any way that God sees fit for them to be used. I am a songwriter. I am uh, a piano player or a keyboardist. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I am a woman that is not afraid to skate around the skating rink in her brand new skates that she bought last year. Come on, (laughs) Kate. I am a woman who is putting herself first. And by that, I am putting my best self first. So I am Mm -hmm. showing up how I see myself. I am a woman that is not only buying all my clothes, but I am also wearing all of my cute clothes because I got a lot of them. Do 
I've seen the closet before and do. <laughs> um, I am not, what's the word? I am not comparing myself, but not on the, um, the literal term of comparison, but like in my mind. I don't know if that makes any sense. So Internal comparison? Internal comparison, because it's not just like put this person right here, right here. It's like, I don't know, it's like almost like an internal battle. And that's something that I don't want to do. Maybe change your internal narrative to yourself. I am a woman who is changing her internal narrative. I am speaking these things as they are and they will come to fruition. Yes, I'm with it. I'm excited. I can't wait to see you play the piano and sing simultaneously. Yes, thank you. Once well, I learned for real, for real, you ain't gonna be able to tell me nothing now. I nope, get them chords together. Musical ass <laughs> woman. But no, I, I want everybody else to do that too. Like I really hope everybody that's listening takes a moment to like name themselves and think about what they want to be and who they want to be. And then and do it in the mirror so that you can see yourself. Oh, yeah. Because Fallon and I are looking at each other, which means we're also looking at ourselves too, because we're on video. So it's almost like we're in a mirror because we can't see ourselves. But I think it's very powerful to be looking at yourself and saying it directly to yourself. Yeah, I agree. Don't be telling people I have a behind the scenes business. Just kidding. Well, listen, they, they know we don't both live in Texas. Well, they, <laughs> That's yeah, we do. Right. Y'all need to know all the all the Y'all do know places. that, right? Y'all do know where I'm at. All right. H Town represent a DC every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywho, yes. I do think it's important. I do think it's very um affirming to look yourself directly in the eye and speak all that boldness over yourself. So I'm with it. Just do that in the mirror. Do I would would like to say that, you know, and this wasn't supposed to be a long episode for Fallon and I tonight because, again, just a quick recap and, you know, tell you guys thank you for rocking with us. But I think that you you better than me if you are not grabbing this year by the balls because time waits on no man. We've been mm -hmm. afforded another day. We can't even say another month, but we've been afforded another day, another minute right now. And I think that um, with that, we really have to look at it. With that comes great responsibility because mm -hmm. everybody not going to have this minute, you know? So I think for 2023, you better than me if you're wasting time, you're not putting yourself where you need to be and doing the things that you say that you need to do. For me this year, my word has been execute. And mm -hmm. I have been kind of looking at myself like, girl, get out of the bed and execute. So every time I think about it, it's like, what are you doing or what are you doing um, that makes today better than yesterday for yourself. I like that. Um, I, I didn't really have a word. I had a series of words, but the first one that popped in my head was ease. I want to be mm. able to do all of those things that I that I am going to do and spoke over myself with ease. Like, I don't want to be stressed out. I don't want to be pulling my hair out while I'm doing them. I want them to easily, like, let God ease, ease these talents and these words out of my head. Like, let this process of growing in our relationship let us do it with ease like all the things i want to do with ease no no more gray hairs for me i just want to live life <laughs> with ease but I, I think that's dope the execution is a, is a good one i need to add that to my series of words for the year but i'm i'm just happy i'm in a good mood i'm just like glad that we were able to get together and you know bring all of this full circle because life be life in and people be needing to know that it's gonna be okay regardless of what they got going on like people been rocking with us doing our non-winning seasons mm -hmm. and our winning seasons so right just just to be able to be a living testament like living testament of stuff just working out stuff not always being 100 percent great but also having the ability to shake back and pray our way through it and, and work our way through it. And I'm, I'm glad that we ain't having to do it alone either. We got each other. We got the people. We got good tribes. Yeah, mm -hmm. we got good tribes. But yeah, that's all I got. What you, what you, what you want to throw on the table for them? Um, I think you better than me if you aren't doing everything Kristen just said. Um, because she <laughs> dropped some jewels. And even I'm going to be taking consideration <laughs> taking into consideration some of the things that she said needed to occur um, and the way to approach them. So you better than me if you didn't learn nothing from this. You also better than me if you don't take a moment while we're on our little 
hiatus to catch up mm-hmm. on all the episodes. We got two seasons. Right. That's a lot of listening. That's about a whole day worth of listening if you catch up on both seasons. But you better than me if you don't do that. Um, and that's about you better than me moment. And I will say for those of you guys that are listen, listening and we're not like close friends, because I know a lot of our close friends listen, but those that are not our close friends, if there are any topics that you, you know, you want to have our our opinion on or you want to hear our take, definitely head over to our Instagram page and, you know, send us a message or feel free to comment on any of the posts that we have. If you don't want to put anything there, you can also follow Fallon and I at our own individual page pages, excuse me. For real, for real. Um, don't drop the link. So our podcast Instagram page <laughs> is the You Better Than Me podcast on Instagram. You can holler at your girl Kristen at Why Not Kristen, and you can holler at your girl Fallon at the notorious well notorious underscore foul. I put the D on there on my own accord. It ain't it ain't on Instagram. Um, <laughs> so rock with us. Let us know. Um, I think we also will be trying to be a little bit more social media present when it comes to keeping the people connected and what's going on, giving the updates when we are on our break. I ain't going to hold myself to it, Kristen. Yeah, I'm going I'm to try to do better, too, because, you know, I am a social media person. So Exactly. I need to do better. But, yes. guys, thank you so much for rocking with us this season. Thank you so much for listening to us today. Feel free to share this podcast with friends and family members. And, yeah, everybody, just, thank you. Yes, thank you yes. so much. And, Cheers to naming yourself and, and doing all those great things. We'll holler. Bye. You Better Than Me is a podcast on Pyromedia Network. Produced by Pyromedia Productions. Pyromedia Network and Pyromedia Productions are subsidiaries of Pyromedia Enterprises. For more information, please visit www.pyromedianetwork.com. Thank you for listening. And we will see you on the next.